Wood Christian Fellowship's weekly podcast. Hope you really enjoy today's sermon and I hope it really blesses you. Father, as we open your word today, would you take communications today and make them real special? I pray that your word would connect with us today, that the message of God would would so just connect today. And uh, Father, we know that that will never happen unless you empower it. So Father, we're asking for the empowerment from heaven to take your word and connect it to our hearts today. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The title of my message today is Severe Storm Warning. If I asked you to describe to me your house, think about your house, the house you live in, okay? If I asked you to describe it to me, you'd probably tell me something about the location where it is. If you're a lady, you'd probably tell me about the color, the design. If you're a bloke, you'd probably tell me about the square footage of your house, the size of your property. You might even tell me as a couple about about your the amount of bedrooms. But you probably wouldn't tell me about the foundation of your house. It probably just wouldn't come up in the conversation, you know. Perhaps you don't know about the foundation of your house. You didn't build it, you you bought it second hand. Yet it's the foundation of your house that's going to make all the difference. This is also true not only about your house, but it's also true about your life. Would you turn with me to Matthew 7? And we're reading from verse 24. Matthew 7, verse 24, it says this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Verse 26. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. I want to draw your attention to the first word. It says, Therefore, That word is, you know, pivot. That word is pivotable. That's where the whole thing pivots. That that word is like the the pinnacle of what Jesus has been up to for several chapters. It all hangs on that word, therefore. It's loaded. If you've ever been on an international flight, like a 747-400 coming back from UK to New Zealand, you're going along. You're going along, and the plane's like this, and you're going along, and then you get out over the coast of New Zealand, and you feel it. It pivots. And you feel that nose, it starts to drop, and you know. You know that the landing is imminent. They don't drop the nose of that plane anywhere between the UK and here until the landing is imminent imminent it's it's right upon you it's minutes away you can feel it everybody's bracing if you take your finger and you flick back two pages this flight so to speak has been going on since matthew chapter 5 i'm just going to read the titles out as i look through it because it reminds us what happened jesus goes up a hill he sits down his disciples come to him he's starting to teach them and and an audience he says stuff like you're the salt of the earth he says you're the light of the world he says don't think anyone's going to wipe out the bible not a single stroke is going to disappear he said you've you've heard it that murder's like this he said but i tell you if you hate your brother from your heart you already committed murder in your heart as i thumb another page this way He says, he looks around and he says, listen up, you guys. If you undress a girl with your eyes when she walks by, 
you already committed adultery with her in your heart. And he's preaching. He's preaching the sermon home. He says, let your yes be yes, your no be no. He says, as for your enemies, you love them. No more of this. He hates you, you hate him. He says, love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. He says, if you're going to fast, don't stand on the street corner and tell everyone. He says, don't worry. God knows everything that you need. He says, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. He says, the narrow way, not the wide road for you. He says, if you're a good person, we'll see good out of your life. Good fruit. And he's preached home to his audience the greatest sermon by the greatest preacher ever. And yet he's going to land that sermon. And he lands it and his pivot, when his nose drops on his sermon, it's hanging on that first word, verse 24 of chapter 7. Therefore, everything before that comes before the therefore. It's the sermon on the mount. And he's about to clinch the deal. And he says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock and he's clinching it and the audience is awestruck at the sermon and he's saying to them it's not enough for you to be awestruck at my great preaching says Jesus you know this is what he's saying it's not enough you have to go away and put it into practice verse 25 everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice that is what he's trying to clinch as he's closing the deal here. I read a quote. It's from a famous construction company. It says this. Getting the foundation right is extremely important. The quote goes on to say, Any mistakes that you make in the foundation will only get worse as you go up mistakes grow they compound and you know today we're talking about foundation as we think about the foolish man in the story if you ask yourself the question why did he build on the sand I sit there I think on it I look at the wise man I look at the foolish man I draw comparisons about him. I draw comparisons about him. Here's my conclusion on it. I think the foolish man miscalculated the weather. That's what I really think happened. I think he thought it was going to be sunshine days ahead and no rain, no wind. He thought it's just going to be good days ahead. And he figured... Any old sand dune will do if it's just sunshiny days, you know. And it can be the same with us. I remember being as a young person. I don't want to stick out. I don't want to look any different from anybody else. Any old sand dune was fine to stick my house on because it wasn't against the flow. I didn't have to stick out. I didn't have to be different. You know, and I would say that for this man who built his hand, house on the sand, you know, he would have sayings in his life like, well, everybody else was doing it. That sort of saying belongs to a person who builds their foundation on the sand. I remember we were in the Midwest of the USA and the TV news came on and it said, severe storm warning. Now you've got to understand, we're living in a 23-year-old 24 foot motorhome it's old and rattly we don't want to be hitting no tornado with this old bus you know it's, it's rattly and I had to fix it every day and then I remember we were at this church and uh, if you're a young person there's, there's a famous artist called Rebecca St. James okay so we're at her church I remember the policeman coming around and he says do you guys know about the severe storm warning that is out. It's coming through 
tonight. And so we took that motor home and we didn't just go, ah, she'll be right. They had one of those one of those entrances into the warehouse under the church and it was a concrete wall here and a concrete wall there and we reversed that motorhome right in tight to that wall and we stuck it right in tight and we weren't joking when he said there's a severe storm on and he's wearing stripes on his shoulders and boots on his feet he knows what he's talking about they know the midwest they know you don't get ready, it's going to blow. It'll pick that motorhome clean off the ground and spit you down the road with your family in it, you know. And so the point of this is Jesus is not pulling any punches in the story when he's talking about the weather that will come, you know. And um, I want you to cast your eye down to verse 25. It says, The rain came. And the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. It doesn't say from Jesus as he's telling this story. He doesn't say, if the rain comes to you, if the winds blow against your life. Yeah, he says, and, and he says it to you today. And I'm warning you, severe storm warning ahead. And, it doesn't say if. If you look at verse 25, there's ands all through it. There's a storm coming against your life in the days ahead, but you'll be fine if you get the foundation down on the rock. I read a story about a little boy. His mum and dad are building a new house, and the diggers out there is on the top of the hill. And mum takes the little boy up to the hole where they're building the foundations, and the little boy looks down in the hole. And then he bursts into tears. And, and, and mum says, son, son, what's wrong? He said, there's no rock down in there. Can you see the simplicity of a kid? He was expecting to build the new house on a rock. They told him the foundation. He knew the story. Where's the rock? You know? And for us, it's foundations we've got to get it right you know when when jesus is talking about storms and if i talk to you about a storm we're not talking about a thunderstorm here a sleet storm a rainstorm what do you think about when we're talking about storms that could come against your life and i sort of wrote some of these dot 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 fill the gap lines and because i don't know what's going on in your life you don't know what's going on and why. You're going to have to fill these gaps. I'll give some suggestions here of some storms that could come your way. And you've got to get your rock locked onto the rock, your foundation. You know, for some people, the storm comes their way. It can be a difficult, broken relationship. It can be a marriage that's tearing apart when the storm comes for some the storm that comes against their life and it's severe it's dad and he criticizes and you're now married and you're still waiting for dad to clap and he don't clap or you're still waiting for mom's approval and she hasn't talked to you for three years it can be your sister or your brother and you've fallen out and then there's a storm going on for another person it can be unpleasant things happening in their health for another person the storm that comes against their life might be the death of someone they really really are connected to for another person it might be their children are rebelling and, and they're going astray and they're, they're disobedient and disrespectful straight to you you know for another person it might be the storm comes again and you're laid off fourth time two years now no job again why and the storm lashes against your life for another person it might be a conflict at church a conflict at your work and the storm thrashes against you but i'll tell you this the storm shows the foundation for what it is you can't put your foundation down in the storm 
You must put your foundation down prior to the storm. The storm only shows the foundation of your life for what it is. If your life is on the rock, if you've put your trust in God, if you've started to apply, you know, he said, he said, blessed is the person who, who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. That's the whole pivotal point. Therefore, put into practice. Now, the person who's put these things into practice before the severe storm hits their life is like the person who put the motor home up against the back wall of the church. It's strong, it's safe, it's out of the weather. And you can tell a person who's got a good foundation when the storm hits. And we see storms in other people's lives. You can see them. If you look back on your own life, you'll notice there were some mean storms, you know. How did you fear? How did you fear in that storm? Did you do well? Did you do bad? In the storm that you're in right now, are you doing well? Are you doing bad? I would say it's very connected to whether you put the words in practice that Jesus said, you know. For some people, they go through a broken relationship and, and it's, it's turning mean and nasty and they can turn the other cheek and not send that text back, which is full of hate. Someone hate texts them, they can just refrain and say something back that's nice. You can only do that if your foundation is stable and in God. For another person who's going through a financial crisis, if their foundation is down, locked in, putting the words of God in practice, I don't know how, but they can still give. They can still give out when there's nothing there. When it's rough and it's hard, they can still give out. For a person who loses a loved one, when the foundation is in God, they can grieve and they can carry on. For a person who's, uh, who's fallen out with someone at church, at work, a management team, whatever it is, they can, if their foundation is right, their identity locks into God. I'm still valuable even if I've fallen out. Can you see that the time to get the foundation down is before the storm? When I think about my own life, when the foundations were going down, I cast my memory back and I remember Jan. Jan was our youth group leader. She was just a honey. I remember being at Taupo Baptist Church. I remember being in this room and Jan said, stand up if you're a Christian. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't stand up at about 12 years old, you know? And I just couldn't stand up. And I went away and it grabbed me. It really grabbed me. I couldn't confess Jesus in front of the audience. I was nervous. I was shaky. I didn't need any attention. And uh, I just, it, it, it was a day where it was pivotal. It was a day where I thought, I'm going to get those foundations right. The 22nd of November, 1987, I talked about it to the men's group. I stood in a white t-shirt in the AC bars right there. I remember looking up and there's like school teachers walking past. And I'm about to get baptized and they say, what have you got to say? And it's public plus. Everyone's looking on, you know. And I said these two things. I said, I've got this to say. From now forth in my life, when I fall down, I'm going to get up fast. I said it publicly. The second thing I said publicly, I said, I'm going to be a Christian for the rest of my life. It was powerful. I look back, those are pivot points in my life. Those are therefore points in my life. Those are when I put into practice, I made solid foundational choices to build that foundation that when the storms came I didn't rock after that can you remember times like this I remember the storm came I was um, two years after I got baptized this is a mean story 
man, I was, I was an apprentice mechanic. You're signed, contract, apprentice, serious deal, you know? They make you sign it in front of your parents. The apprentice guy tells you how serious this contract is. And I get to work, and Bruce is there. No teeth, talks about hitting dogs with four by twos, and just bad mouths everyone. He's just the nastiest piece of work on two legs, you know? And uh, I work with this guy. I'm 19. I'm vulnerable. And this guy is just mean and nasty. It's nothing for me to go find my whole socket set upside down in the rubbish bin, you know? It's nothing for me to start up my engine and he put a ball bearing down the carburetor and it just knocks, you know? It's nothing for me to go out to my car and he's run a screwdriver through my radiator, you know? Man, I mean, this is nasty. And, and I remember him starting in on my mum. I'm a 19-year-old kid. He doesn't even know my mum. And he's telling me terrible stuff. You know, it doesn't get any better. My dad came down to sort it out because, man, this thing, the storm, the storm is a tornado. And it's ripping through this workshop where, where I'm 19. And I'm signed in a contract, and I'm saying, God, I forgive him. And I, I get the courage to get out of my, my van and walk in in the morning just to get in there. And then lunchtime, I go and cry on Jan's shoulder or, or Denise's shoulder or, or whoever the youth leader. Man, you got to help me through this thing. The storm is just like battering this 19-year-old kid, you know. And uh, it, it, it climaxed and I had to leave. Man, it went on for 19 months. I was in that storm. I, personally, I wish I had left earlier now, but I, I, was, I had some tenacity about me as a kid, you know. But the point is this. I didn't turn inside out. I didn't lose my faith. I trusted. The day I left that smoke, I said, Bruce, I want you to know I forgive you. He didn't even know what to do with that. It was just like, pfft, you know, I don't give a rip. You know, I don't care, you know. But you know what? My foundation stood strong. But it, it's because I laid a good foundation. I practiced the things that Jan taught me from the Word of God. I stood on when it said, forgive those who persecute you. Do good to those who harm you. I believed that those building blocks were there. And when that severe storm come, my house stood. I didn't build on the sand. And I want to say to you folk today, build on the rock. Put into practice. You know, if I said to you, you know what? Vegetables are good for your life. You know, like silver beets, Brussels sprouts, raw cabbage. Now, you can stay here today and you can say, yep, I, I, I believe you, Rex, you know. But unless you actually practice it, you won't get the nutrients in your blood in and it won't bring radiant health to you, will it? You can say, I believe it. I heard it. But unless you actually do it, you, you won't receive the benefit, will you? One thing to hear, that's why Jesus said, put into practice. He who hears my verse, verse 24, 25, he who hears my words and puts them into practice. That might not have connected with you, the last illustration. How about this one? Do you floss your teeth? We have these this special high tensile white string. It's mint flavored. It's got rich brand written down the side of it. We've all been to the dentist. We've all seen the chart on the wall. And it says, you should practice daily flossing your teeth. And yet, do you? <laughs> you know, the only reason you don't put it into practice, you don't believe that your teeth are going to rot out of your head. You don't believe it. Otherwise, daily, you would take that mint-flavored floss and pull those bits of pork out of your teeth, you know? It's true, though, eh? It's one thing to know about flossing your teeth. It's another thing to put it into practice. As I close, Jesus said this. He said, He hears my word. Okay? 
that's an input. That's a receiving. That's a laying of a block foundation that's good and solid and into the rock. You have to expose yourself to the hearing of the Word. For some people, it's before they get up in the morning, they just open this thing. And if you look in mine, it's in the front. It's got a Bible reading plan. I don't even try and keep up to date. I just tick the next one when I completed the reading. And I slowly read it through cover to cover. And then I download another one. I get Darren's glue stick and I stick it in the front again because I want to be exposed to the hearing of the Word. You know, when you come to church on a Sunday, you say, I'm going to come. I know it's good for me. You expose yourself to the hearing of the word and of the word and you build the foundation when you dial up that mp3 online and you listen to that guy preach and it's encouraging when you go to that home group and you're discussing the word of god and, and you're and you're making yourself accountable to people you lay another foundation so when when jesus said it's the person who hears my word and puts it into practice I'll just read it through one more time as we close. Jesus told this story. Matthew 7, verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The severe warning was there. Can you see it? The rain came, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. Father, today we want, we want a good foundation. Father, across the church today, everyone hearing you here today, we want, we long to put our foundation onto the rock and get it down strong. Father, would you, uh, would you remind us to hear your word? Would you remind us to expose ourselves to it? And Father, above all things, may we put your word into practice. I just have it on my heart to um, pray for people this morning. Like, um, yeah, if you're in a storm, and you or you know someone who's in a storm, can we just pray for each other? I don't, you know, I'm happy to stand up here if anyone wants to come up and pray and, and have prayer. I think we need to support each other and support those around us. The world is in a huge storm, <laughs> and um, yeah, I just want to really just offer myself for that this morning and anyone else want to pray for anyone else come up and join me hey thanks for listening to the podcast of Inglewood Christian Fellowship in Taranaki New Zealand call by and listen in again next week God bless bye bye